students till now we have talked about site selection construction and management of fish ponds we have talked about dry buns and wet buns today we shall be talking about the types of the ponds used for aquaculture and particularly for fish farming before proceeding it is my request to you all to like and subscribe my channel bio learning first of all we shall be knowing that what a pond is when we say pond it is a small still land based body of the water formed by pooling inside a depression either naturally or artificially and pond is always smaller than a lake and uh, when we talk about a fish pond it is defined as an artificial structure used for the farming of fish and it is filled with fresh water and is fairly shallow and it, it is usually non flowing now we shall be talking one by one the types of the ponds and the first of all we shall be talking about the types of the ponds based on the source of water that what is the source of the water so when we say source of the water the ponds can be fed by ground water so we do have the certain ponds which are fed by the ground water and the one of them is spring water pond spring water pond where in the water supply is from a spring which is either near or close to it and the water supply may vary throughout the year but the quality of the water remains the same though the water quality remains the same but the supply may vary depending upon the season the second kind of the ground water fed pond is seepage pond and these are supplied water from the water table so such ponds are supplied water directly from the water table wherein you, we can see that these such kinds of the ponds are fed if the water table is high that very water gets seeped into the pond and water gets filled up pond gets filled up and but here one thing is there that it is dependent on during the rainy season water level is high and there is enough water but during the dry season the water level gets low and the pond begins to dry then the second category of the pond is rain fed pond so rain fed ponds are supplied from the rain water so they are directly dependent on the rain and surface runoff secondly surface runoff that is the water which comes from the surface and gets deposited and or gets accumulated in a depression low lying depression uh, like a pond so there is no water during the dry season so we are saying that it the, these such ponds are totally dependent on the rainfall and these ponds are often small depressions in impermeable soil so they do have the depression in impermeable soil and if dike is built on the lower side the water retention capability is increased the ponds can be fed from a water body as well the third kind of the ponds are those ponds which can be fed from the water body so if <clears throat> they can be they can be fed directly from the uh, directly or they can be fed indirectly so ponds can be fed from the water body such as stream lake reservoir irrigation canal rivulet brook and there may be they may be fed directly as i was talking about they may be fed directly that that is the water gets directly into the pond we call such kind of the ponds as the barrage ponds because a little barrage is built from and one side it gets in and from the other side it gets out if water is enough and the other kind of the ponds we call them as the as the indirect ponds or the diversion ponds where in the stream river rivulet brook that is flowing along the side of the pond and we we divert we divert the water through a channel into the pond indirectly that is why we call them as the as the indirectly fed ponds the fourth category uh, is uh, the pump fed ponds pump fed ponds are normally higher than the water table so it means that they are at the higher level than that of the water level so water needs to be filled with the help of the um, we can say tube well bore well or the, from the from the spring lake reservoir or by pumping as well 
the second main category of the ponds are those ponds which can be categorized on on the basis of drainage that what kind of drainage do do they have some of the ponds we call them as the undrainable ponds undrainable ponds cannot be drained uh, by gravity they are generally fed by groundwater or surface runoff and their water level may vary seasonally such ponds they are categorized into two main groups they are grouped into two that is they may be dug in swampy areas where there is no source of water so such kinds of ponds can be dug in some swampy area where there is no source of the water other than ground water other than ground water so other than ground water in the swampy area there is no water so such pine kind of the ponds uh, are the first category of the undrainable ponds and the second category may result from the extraction of the soil material such as gravel sand or clay so second category of the pond is that we extract this very sand gravel uh, um, these very ponds and render the pond a pond undrainable that is we extract the sand there is no drainage left so this is second category first is in swampy and other is the extraction then the um, then the second main category is drainable pond drainable ponds are the set of the uh, set uh, higher than the uh, level to which water is drained that is such ponds are at the uh, are at the higher level and we can drain the water we can siphon the water we can drain the water easily by gravity and they are generally fed by surface these are the water uh, they get water from the surface runoff or spring or stream or they can also be fed by the pump but the problem but our concern is that such ponds are drainable ponds the third subcategory is pump drained ponds pump drained ponds that is the pump drained ponds they may be drainable by gravity to a, a certain level but then water is to be pumped out that up to certain level the, they can be drained by gravity but they cannot be all emptied so at some point of the time to completely drain the water we need we need some pumps so other than ponds similar to the undrainable ponds they must be pumped out completely these ponds are only used where ground water does not seep back into any extent so third main category is according to the construction material that the type of the ponds based on the construction material so what kind of the ponds so according to the construction material the ponds are further categorized as earthen ponds when we say earthen pond these earthen ponds are entirely constructed from soil materials from the soil materials and they are most common that is earthen pond it is soil material when we use the soil material for the construction of the pond we call such ponds as earthen ponds the second category is walled ponds that is the wall ponds are usually surrounded by blocks the first of all we we construct the blocks brick by brick and uh, we also use the concrete and sometimes instead of the uh, concrete we use the wooden planking or corrugated metal instead of the blocks concrete or bricks so th such kind of the ponds we call them as the ward ponds the third category of the ponds is lined ponds that is when the earthen ponds they are lined with the impervious material such as plastic or rubber sheet so many times when we face difficulty that we do have the land but the land the soil of the land is porous it is permeable so in order to prevent the seepage of the water we we line the uh, pond with the help of the impervious material that can be a plastic or a rubber sheet then uh, fourthly according to the construction method the ponds are further categorized as dugout ponds that is the when we say dugout pond that is we um, we go below below the uh, below the uh, ground level that is dugout ponds they are constructed by excavating soil from an area 
to form a hole which is then filled with water so we const we construct we dig we take out the soil we dig the uh, ground and we take out the soil and we make a big hole so that we can uh, we can tend to uh, we tend to accumulate the water so they are usually undrainable and fed by rainfall surface runoff or ground water so such kinds of the ponds they are undrainable and fed by rainfall surface runoff the second category of the ponds we call them as the embankment ponds that is above the ground above the ground we just make the embankments we make the embankments we construct the embankments and without excavation by building one or more dikes that without excavation so we don't we don't dig but we just construct the embankment by building one or more dikes that these are the dikes which are constructed above the level to impound the water so such walls when are built uh, the um, they helped us to uh, to collect the water and they are usually drainable such ponds um, have the um, drainage they are drainable and they are fed by gravity flow of water or by pumping so these ponds can be uh, drained by the gravity flow or by pumping also then the third in this category is cut and fill ponds so sometimes we see that the, the there is slopey area what we do we we cut a certain portion and then we use that very soil for making the embankment so that the water is retained so cut and fill ponds are built by a mix of excavation and embankment on sloping ground they are usually drainable and water which is impounded within the dikes is fed by gravity or by pumping so such ponds are also drainable we can take the water out and and we can also used the water pumps also then according to the use of the ponds that many times that what is the use of the pond so ponds can also be categorized as a spawning ponds nursery ponds brood ponds storage ponds fattening ponds integrated ponds and wintering ponds so there are different types of the ponds on a fish farm so if we have a big fish farm we require a number of the uh, ponds uh, having the different capabilities uh, having the different you can say um, uh, different needs for different needs so we do have the spawning ponds they are uh, they are uh, used for the production of the eggs and the small fry then we do have the nursery ponds they are used for the production of the larger juveniles then the brood ponds which are used for the brood stock rearing then we do have the storage ponds which are used for holding fish temporarily often prior to marketing and then we do have the fattening ponds which are used for the production of the food fish then we do have the certain integrated ponds which have crops animals or other fish ponds around them to supply waste materials to the pond as feed or fertilizer and then we do have the wintering ponds as well for holding fish during the cold season and sometimes we also have the quarantine ponds wherein if fish is brought from some other place we need to quarantine uh, that very fish before releasing into our stock so these uh, these were the types of the ponds based on the different uh, you can say criteria uh, so uh, this ends uh, this very topic so that's all for today thank you for watching and uh, i wish that you have su subscribed the channel biolearnia wherein you will be getting the uh, latest lectures thank you thank you very much